Good evening and welcome to the evening show. So we are in North American territory now and uh, I'm joined by the usual suspects. To my left is going to be Dan. How are you doing this evening, sir? Very fine indeed. Good. <laughs> to my right, we're going to have Halvor. To my other, other left, we're going to have um, Yanko. So Halvor, how are you doing as well? Doing good. Ready to get the night shift going. All right, Halvor. No, that's Halvor. <laughs> this is Yanko. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Good. Ready to go? Two more matches? Yes. Okay, so first up, we're going to have Liquid versus Dogmen. Now, uh, <laughs> the main story here is that Alu is playing for Liquid. However, Alu is playing for Liquid from Finland, and Alu is orping, we assume. Well, why, why do we assume that they, they have a Dren there? <laughs> Indeed, they do, Mr. <laughs> Troll Yanko, but... <laughs> You know, obviously they're, they're, they're having some kind of trial here. I suppose the priority for them is communication. They know what he's capable of. So I suppose the question is, does he gel with the team? Because obviously, assuming he has on average, I don't know, 150 ping, or ping specifically, it's not going to be easy. It is doable. I'd say, I'd say it's a doable about on about 150 ping, but uh, we can get back to that in a bit. Let's have a look and give you guys a reminder on exactly what the format is of this tournament. If you're wondering, it is a qualifier to go to Las Vegas to play for $50,000. There will be one team going from Europe, one team going from the USA. There will be a best of three format. Eight teams are in both regions, but only one team will survive and make it over to Vegas. So we can have a look at the North American bracket and see how all these teams are doing at the moment, who they're going up against and who they may face in the semifinals tomorrow. Splice will be going up against enemy on the left hand side of the bracket that will be tomorrow but first we're going to have liquid versus dogmen and conquest versus complexity which will be our second map of the evening here so going into liquid versus dogmen again um i mean do we know much about dogmen are you any of you guys familiar with dogmen yes is the former three sub i don't know how you pronounce the name of that three team. sub i think it is yeah, yeah it's all the five players from that team and they've been together for some time they've had close games against liquid in particular at on uh, in the online part of uh, ee pro league so they could pose a threat for liquid considering that liquid's playing with talo with 150 ping and they need to you know adjust stuff because of it so we'll see the the, the first two games we had in this tournament from the na region were both upset so who knows indeed so Liquid should be a favourite in this match. I say Liquid, you know, they can struggle against Europe, but as far as North America goes, they're one of the more disciplined teams. Yeah, and they do pretty well normally in, in NA, basically, in any domestic league, even better. Normally, we're used to seeing Cloud9 struggling to actually make it through the NA like league stages of the regular season and then be the best team at the actual event versus European teams, and Liquid kind of doing the opposite, and that's winning the regular season online and then bombing out. Uh, as soon as possible, whenever you get to as that. Soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it's going to be exciting to see. I'm really curious how how they're actually going to implement Alu. Because I'm assuming they want him because he's a really solid all-around player who can use the AWP, but I'm not really sure how you're going to play to those strengths with well, 180 plus ping. Let's have a look at the maps here. And we can see that Dogmen have picked Dust 2, which is going to be a good map for Raupers. Liquid have picked Cash, which will be a good map for Raupers as well, but there's often a good map for Liquid, especially in North America. And then the, the deciding map is going to be Mirage. So if you're an OPA, I think they are good maps all around. Would you agree, Yanko? Yeah, well, Cash is probably the best map for Liquid. I mean, for the, for the old Liquid team, so they're definitely going to be satisfied with that. They don't play Dust 2 that much, so I guess that's, uh, I mean, a good map for 3 sub. Also, it's the first map. Maybe they can, you know, catch Liquid off guard. They're not warmed up yet, so we'll have to wait and see. I don't know how much time do we have, but I want to ask you guys, what do you think, like, can you find a reason? Why would you bring in Alu instead of Fagli and not Adren, and when you can just maybe bring him in instead of Adren and move Adren to a coaching role, which I think would suit him far more? Does he want to play a uh, coaching does he role? Want to be, yeah, exactly. Well, that's maybe we'll have to answer that after the game as we are going to go into the pistol now. And the entire Dogmen team are moving straight into the B bomb site. Or B no stop is the command. Going to have the nades coming in from the liquid side. We are outside the B bomb site for the most part. We've got a very fast flank coming in from the uh, from the halls area though. But he's been smoked off the site, pushing in now. Alu's going to get the first frag onto Rabbit. He's going to get traded by Aria. Yeah, so just going to be Jason on it, uh, left now. 
as that bomb's ticking away. He's definitely got a good chance here if he's able to just get that first frag, but he's not able to do so. Alij will shut him down, and <laughs> it's quite funny to see Ali on this lineup, isn't it? It's a bit... Only 130 ping. Yes, that's actually pretty decent. That's quite reasonable. I, I, I often play uh, with a uh, Russian Orca deep in Siberia, and she tends to body people with 100 ping, so 130 ping doable, but we'll have to see. Only time will tell. Yeah, so he's going to pick up the scout, and uh, it, it would be actually a pretty huge difference with this lineup, having a Dren being more of in the rifle and support roles, and having a hard-hitting Orpa. That actually could make a lot of sense, but we're going to see just a quick push here. Dogman, having got the bomb down, they want to die. They are naked nudists, and they're making their way Naked to nudists as opposed a... to fully clothed nudists. Exactly. So, uh, it does make sense. In that world, maybe. So it's going to be uh, just oh, a very fast round, and then we're going to get the AKs. So we saw that this was a big problem uh, previously as well, this same situation, because the AKs are already out, and look what Liquid have. Yeah, not the st strongest weaponry right now, Scout, MP9. Two Colts, though. So they do have that, and uh, they do have a P90, which can be effective, even if, it, uh, if it's up against head armor and AKs, depending on the kind of angle you can get on it. Well, on paper, they could have a better buy because their buys are more expensive than a Dogman buy, <laughs> which is very attentive by uh, KD in there. Well done, sir. Dogman, with the AKs, as I forementioned. Alu holding down mid with the scout. There are some people dancing around in mid at the moment. Abe is lurking outside long. So what is the play from Dogman? Are they just looking for picks at the moment? Wabbit's being tagged by the scout. So far, so good for Alu. Well, this is a, a fun trick, actually. I think I saw this from Sean Gares quite some time ago. You actually make the smoke sound in the upper dark area, and the T's can basically assume that you're not going to be pushing because you've smoked it off. And indeed, we're going to see Nitro is just doing the opposite of that. So he will actually be able to quickly approach T-spawn. But will it be fast enough? Because actually, there's a liquid of evacuated the B site. But at the very least, once they see this coming, they're going to be able to say, OK, well, at least we can hold on to dark and then use that area to try to retake because <laughs> they have no idea wow. what's going on. This is actually hilarious. It's not every day you see the B bomb site taken for free on a buy round for both teams. So now Liquid are forced to play a retake with the inferior weaponry. Abe holding down the mid area quite well. Two headshots for him, taken down eventually by Nitro, who will fall unsurprisingly losing the duel when he's holding an MP9. So it's Ali and Hiko remaining. Hiko with a two man spread over the P90. Is this possible? Ali to clutch now, the man of 130 ping versus two. He does have a kit. There's one down. Can he find the last player? Indeed he can, and Ali's going to do it for his team. So this is a completely absurd round, Dan. Are we serious here? The CTs abandoned the B sites. The T's went through mid where nobody was there into the B site and took it for free. And they retook it with a two-man spray down with a P90 and Ali to clutch with 130 ping. What is going on, Dan? <laughs> That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You're not going to see a round like that. Almost ever. Uh, ever, yeah, because that's very rare that teams will run both those strats at the same time on those timings. But uh, hey, that's going to cripple Dogman, isn't it? It's going to cripple my brain down. Well, <laughs> James out. He's done. Okay. <clears throat> so it's just about the damage game now for Dogman, having been slapped down in that last round. Although, although that said, they did actually get a lot of kills. So yeah, any damage they can get in this round is also going to be good. Do you know how we can compare that round? What we compare that round to? What we can compare that round to? A fairground ride. You know those merry-go-rounds with all the, the fancy horses. But yeah. All these teams are on with guns. So can Liquid hold this time? They're on the site. We've got Dogmen running through the smoke, semi-blind. Liquid Pico put himself in a very strong position, but he's going to get wrecked by Jason R. Two versus two. Now Ali on the AWP might be a bit tricky. That might be uh, a bit of an issue with 130 ping. AWP missing the shot, which he would normally no doubt get. So Adren's going to be the man with the plan. Surely flying into the site now, getting taken down by Jason. And it's again Alu in a one versus two. Jason's got less than 10 HP. Abe's going to have to come in for the save here with a pre fire with a tech nine. They'll probably get their first round on the board. Hmm. Bit of questionable play from, uh, from Team Liquid right there. I, I can see from Hiko's tempo why he would want to switch up positions and actually wait it out. But while doing so, he allows for. Dogman to get further positioning and actually take out two of his teammates, and he only gets one guy in return for uh, as a trade for it. I definitely don't think that's worth it. I think it's better if Hiko just gives up his own life there to hold people back for. Uh, so what you're saying is he based on his teammates? Like. Uh, well, yeah, he kind of sold out his two of his teammates there. It's a Trojan horse. Well, Liquid has, have given up long on this eco. They've taken a gamble. 
And uh, Jason Wilde's just biding his time in that position. Professor Chaos is coming in as well. But no chaos will be had because there's nobody, has, nobody there to engage in said chaos. Yeah, it's a pretty rough situation. I'm qu still kind of uh, surprised that Liquid actually lost that previous round. So that's a really big one, as we can see that that's changed everything. They've been reset on the economy, and Dogman look pretty strong, and Ali's going to get himself into lower dark, but not for too long before Abe will be able to neutralize him. So Liquid really looks struggling to find ways to approach this round from a damage perspective. You can see Abe is just doing way, way more work here in middle. Four kills, actually, in total, so he pretty much single-handedly dealt with Liquid in that round. And now Liquid have a spot where do they buy, do they go for another save? I think it's a qu pretty questionable situation. I think you might as well go for another save, otherwise you risk of actually putting yourself in that hole where you have to eco after every single buy round you lose from that point on, and that could just really drag down your entire CT side. Plus you're going to deny up both Alu and potentially Adran to actually pick up ops. Mm. Okay, we've got a bunch of deagles in play here for the Liquid side. We'll see if they can connect with any headshots, get the meat shot. Everybody watching the spread, it seems for the CT side and B, Hiko and Nitro will be dispatched, leaving only three. So what is the play from the remaining players of Liquid? Elise could consider trying to save his Kevlars for the rest. They've only got the pistols, really. So uh, they could set up to try and steal some guns, although it seems Elise will be doing the same. Yep, it's definitely going to be very, very nice if they can actually uh, just get some damage done here because Dogmen have been taking clean rounds so far, and Liquid, I'm, I'm still a little bit curious how Ali, how good Ali is going to be actually with that orb, with that ping. Like, what is the impact here? Because when it comes to anti lag, uh, some the way some systems do it, I'm not sure 100% how it works in CSGO, but some systems have like a cutoff point where you kind of get screwed over, and in most of those systems, it's actually around 100, 100 ping actually. So I have to see how effective Ali's actually going to be. It actually seemed pretty good with the rifles, but hey, we're into the next round and finally we see the buy. Looks like Alu is not going to be going for the jewels in mid, which would make sense. I think that would be quite unfavorable, all things considered. So going to be going over for an initial peek towards long. You can see that smoke coming down just to push any potential angle holders off said angles. So mid has been abandoned. We'll see if Dogmen can identify that fact soon. But first, we're going to be heading up short with Aria, who will see that there's no uh, aggression in that area. Liquid extremely split up right now. So, ooh, pretty nice shot from Alu right there. But okay, Liquid rotating over, so B's pretty open right about now, and he's not gonna have any sort of help coming in from the rest of his teammates if Dogmen are setting up for that B split with Wabbit pushing through mid. And there we go, that's the smoke. Here we go, we got the push coming into B, and Eco is certainly going to be in a bit of trouble as we'll have Professor Chaos getting that frag. And a three versus four situation. Liquid looking uh, to reclaim what was once theirs. They've left their, uh, their belongings in there. They would like to reclaim them. But I don't think Dogmen are going to allow that. Lots of nades, good positioning as well, and Liquid with only one angle of attack, deciding that that's just not good enough and they would rather save the weapons, and I cannot, uh, cannot disagree with them, with the way their money is right now. Yeah, only having three flashes going up against four people on probably one of the hardest sites to retake in all of CS. That's not a great situation to, to go for it, especially given the fact that Alu has high ping and he's got an op, and ops in itself are hard to retake with, but you add 100 extra ping to that and lack of nades, it's not going to be too fun. Right, so the score has been tied up and the money is ropey for Liquid, but drops are possible. It could go for the buy again. We'll see how they choose to manage their money. It seems they will have the buy coming out indeed. So it will be five M4s, reasonable amount of nades as well. Ali will be concentrating on Yorp. Going to go for the peak in mid as well. But uh, Aria has made his way all the way through Suicide already into that corner where people like to uh, look over towards whatever mind that never really fast push here. Maybe just trying to uh, break Liquid as fast as possible. Rush B again. Alu's waiting to hold the angles, but he's been smoked off. Could possibly stand on top of the box and try and find something, but he's going to go to the window instead. And it could be another save for Liquid already, a three versus five. And they have little chance of taking this, it must be said, unless they can get uh, a cheeky frag. But those Molotovs will maybe give the answer to them as to whether or not they're going to go for a push. Indeed, it becomes the save once more. Arius positioned himself in top mid to start the hunt. So it looks like Dogmen 
We'll be looking for some meat. I couldn't think of a better pun, but I couldn't help <laughs> myself. Well, it's going to be an interesting situation once again. I mean, at least Liquid get to save some weapons. That's that's something, I guess. That's going to allow them to, to, to do something, but... Uh, it's interesting that Dogman haven't, didn't decide to go for the hunt quicker, actually, in that situation. The horses being hunted by the dogs. It's kind of a, a decent situation Dogman find themselves regardless. Because as long as Liquid save these three rifles, they're going to do buy-ups every single time. And they're not going to get a full buy at any point. So the good part for, uh, for Dogman is that they're constantly going to be going up against not that great buys. Well, Dogman have taken long again. Quick note, they've had four bomb plants in eight rounds as well. So uh, Ali's going to be forced away from his position. And now we've got three or four Dogman players moving up long. One of the fastest left already. There is a CT on Goose, but is he going to be able to do anything about this? Ali gets taken down by Abe. He gets traded by Adren, so uh, things are not working out for Liquid now. How are they going to retake the site? It's a nice mate, but is it going to be enough here for Adren? Yeah, they need to finally get a retake going, commit to something. This doesn't look like it's too, too bad, but two versus four. I mean, we've got lots of low players here for Dogmen, but it's not going to be good enough it's so far. Good positioning from these players on Dogmen, and they will steal away the rounds. So Liquid seem to be having a lot of problems here. Well, they're, they're playing it quite weirdly, to be honest. The fact that the communication is obviously bungled up when Alu is allowing himself to send that open and they could have no idea actually that someone from Dogmen are actually crossing over. Now, obviously that could be a just a reason, or, you know, it could be one of the reasons could be because they're just playing together right now, but it uh, doesn't really look good. And so far, none of the sites from Liquid have really looked solid at all. It's just been really sloppy play. Well, I mean, yeah, there have been rounds where Liquid have abandoned mid, which is reasonable. Um, but there's been rounds where they've just abandoned long as well. And it seems every time they've abandoned long, it's just been taken immediately by Dogmeat. I don't, maybe they're just they're not hearing the nades. Or I don't know what if they're taking a cue, but they're just they're exploiting the opportunities being given to them by Liquid. So yeah. perhaps they need to just have a more traditional standard play. But that could be. I'm not really sure if they're trying to make up for the fact that Aldo is playing on a high ping, so maybe they don't want to rely on him holding down mid alone, and that's why they're doubling up on Catwalk or something when he's there. Uh, or if it's, it has anything to do with that. But so far, the CP setups from Liquid haven't really been that impressive. E even when they're just doing simple things, just crossing over to be from, from CT spawn right from the get-go, it doesn't seem like they actually have anyone looking up mid to see if somebody's dropping down suicide or not. You saw that one round. Uh, I think it was two rounds ago where you had Arya dropping down suicide and actually getting, getting into the corner and right side of mid while the rest of the team was pushing in B. You had Nitro, sat, he was kind of sat behind in mid to throw a nade over into mid for Aldo or something and Pico was ending or ended up being alone in on the B bomb site. But nobody even told Aldo that somebody had dropped suicide. The first guy crossing will definitely be able to see that. If not, the second guy should be able to see that. So like it should be impossible for Arya to actually get down to that spot unnoticed. So all this should have a pretty easy pick, and the two guys on, on well, who would normally go to the B bomb side should be able to just fully focus on holding B while Ollie can control mid. Well, it seems we are back into the match. There's another buy here for Liquid. Now it's down to the Famas. This time they're going to have two people on along, including Alu, who's going to take the jewel and win it over Wabbit. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be a little bit more difficult now losing man at least, but that's good if you are a Liquid fan, of course. Now, at the moment, Dogmen, they could definitely do to take some control towards Catwalk, maybe pressure Ali's position a little bit, and we will see the smoke as well, which will force Ali back. Now, is this a reaction that they are going to be uh, expecting? We'll have to see. I mean, we have the 2-3 from Liquid. It's a very passive, very basic setup. Ali can deal with the uh, position from card towards Catwalk if they push through that area, or if Dogman go towards B, they're going to have to deal with a fairly solid uh, setup between Nitro and Hiko. So just keeping it to the basics and hoping that that's going to pay off. And Dogman now have got a lot of information and they're committing to the B split. Uh, once again, mid has been taken for free by Dogman, despite being a man down, but uh, the other CTs are so far away. This time, Hiko Hiko and Nitro are getting the jewels, but uh, Abe coming in from the back and Liquid have been exploited again. On this occasion, they have a man advantage going back into it. We'll see if it pays off. Elysia is quite close. 
Is he willing to push? Arias looked, he's had a peek and taken down Alu, so things looking difficult for Liquid once again. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough one. Adren is in now, though, with that M4, and he's got some free shots, but he's not going to get the kill. That's a pretty huge deal. And that is going to be that. He gets shut down. So Dogman with a pretty standout half at the moment. 7-3 as they put Liquid in again. Look horrible money. money on Dogman's side as well. Yeah. Just rolling in it, but... It, but Liquid had a tactical pause, but again, they've just left mid wide open and Dogmen are continuing to exploit the same things. Aside from the B rushes, they've taken mid for free and every time Liquid have been so far away to help their players in B. And here comes the B rush once more. Only two players here. Why is a short push going on for the T's, uh, CTs? Alu and Adren with pistols are all that remain for Liquid. They're taking down two Dogmen players though. Maybe they can pick up some weapons. You can see Professor Chaos has positioned himself for glory, and there is said glory. Yeah, ruthless stuff. Now Liquid just with the Dren. And uh, what are your thoughts on the the possible dynamics uh, going forwards with the uh, with the Dren? You know, how does how does uh, having Ali as the main offer like shift shift him? Do you reckon? Mm, I guess the Dren as the secondary offer is better than better than nothing, and it might lead him. Or leave him with uh, the opportunity to focus more on just doing in-game calling. So that that could be an added added benefit. Maybe the team will get stronger over time with Alu as the dedicated offer, so Edron has less to think about. But speaking of secondary offers, seems that Nitro is going to be picking it up. He has been uh, practicing it practicing it as of late, and we're going to see four ops on the map in total as Wabbit and Aria will be rocking the big green guns as well. Mm. And it's actually quite funny because this always, always used to be in the uh, kind of famous NIP Fnatic sh uh, showdowns on this map. It always used to go to this, just tr always as much as possible, double up on both sides. Of course, something Ali is going to be very used to do, do dealing with. And uh, we've got Abe already making the first kill, so things going the way of Dogmen. Good peek though from a leash towards Long. So starting to get uh, pieces of the picture now are Liquid and Dogmen. It's the next challenge, and there it goes. Nitro with the frag onto Wabbit. And Dogman have to get a response out of this. He can't just be whittled down. And there it is, Jason with a quick push-up catwalk. And he's going to take liberties now, just sprinting forwards to see what else he can get done there. But look at B. B's been abandoned. And again, Dogmen are going to take it. But this Harry is, is starting to creep in. But this is pretty poor because they haven't seen a bomb. They just know Jason was there all by himself. And they've just given up the entire bomb site. Completely for free. Now they realize what is happening. But is it too late? There's one up left on both sides. Nitro pushing in Guardian Star with that smoke, looking around, and he's got to find Aria by the car. Aria goes down. Professor Chaos never made it into the site. Maybe Dogmen are overplaying this. There's 22 seconds left, and the bomb's been lost now. Have Dogmen thrown the food out of the thing that dogs eat food from, Dad? The bowl? The bowl, yes. <laughs> Dad! I, honestly, I don't know. They really overcomplicated that, that's for sure. That is for sure. I mean, they had. I, well, let's see if Jason can can salvage just an extra kill first. I mean, there's there's a player there pinned at the top of mid. At least this is very unlikely he'll peek. But yeah, that was pretty awkward, wasn't it? I mean, you want to keep things simple. If you got a bomb site, you got a bomb site. They, they had an opportunity there on both sides. Maybe that's what confused them. I don't know what they all confused them, to be honest. I can see if you've got two equally good options, how that could, you know... But how are they equally good? You have to rotate the bomb, bomb through mid, though, yeah, on its exactly. own. Yeah, exactly. You have the bomb <laughs> two meters away from where you can plant it, and you're like, oh, there's a free bomb site 250 miles away from here. Let's right. go there. There's <laughs> yeah. only 20 seconds left. Let's go down the Silk Road. There are, there, there are no bandits on the Silk Road, right, yeah. guys? And it's makes sense of it, but yeah, it's, it seems like a huge blunder. And that's, that could cost them massively, actually, considering that Liquid have, uh, you know, have so many rounds behind. And Dogman had otherwise been kind of cr crushing them. Liquid are now back into the game by that that's a critical mistake. Trying to take the bomb solo from lower tunnel up short. That cross can often be a very arduous task. So the answer seemed simple to us. But there we go. Dogmen have thrown around Liquid's way. And Liquid now have a man advantage. Ape has left the building. The bomb is standing outside long at the moment. So it seems that perhaps a split is the aim of the game here for Dogmen in this round. However, there's still a lurker in area towards B. 50 seconds for them to play with. And that bomb's moving slightly away from Long now, so Dogmen seems just looking for a pick. Spotting a player in B, but uh, not making the connection they may, may have wanted. 
Yep, play goes through middle. This could be something for Dogmen to build from, and indeed they'll get the, ki uh, the quick kill onto Adren. So now there's also pressure on the actual bomb site, but again, the Eco Nitro combo is pretty damaging. Jason, though, able to topple that combo. And it's going to be the retake situation, but Jason is left alone. He's going to have to get the quad kill to actually pull this one off as he goes for the quick in, uh, Molotov there. But he does not have time to plant. The CTs are right above him. Both of them, in fact, they can just, just both charge through. <laughs> they block each other through there. And there you go. That's going to be that. 5-8 liquids generating some momentum here. Uh, right now, liquid are having a real struggle of actually holding control over that middle area. Is it? Do you think it's an option for them to boost someone behind, like on that box there? So if the smoke goes the down, exactly. The freakazoid position? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, they've been exploited so many times through there. Yeah. You saw Adren try to mount an offensive. We'll come back to that because, it, again, it looks like a rush speed. Don't stop from Dogmen. See if it's the right call for them this time. That nade's going to do a considerable amount of damage. Indeed, Wabbit's going to go down. Nitro now trying to get a pick. And uh, he won't, but Alu will on the Lurker area, so three versus two retake. It's going to be a tough, tough situation to hold here. Three CTs bearing down on the position. And they got uh, some utility as well, and Leash instantly taking down eight. So see you later, Jason, as the defuse is going to come in. Pretty ruthless and savage aggression back into the bomb site. And Liquid's, uh, it seems like they are really capitalizing, really punishing Dogman really hard for that one big mistake in that one round. And they've, they've started to find their groove. And Dogmen really struggling to get the attacks in there. It's interesting that uh, you know Abe and uh, Jason are very, very much ahead of everyone on their team when it comes to the fragging. You could say, Dan, that the Dogmen threw Liquid a bone. And on that bombshell, we do have the two orbs here still running for Liquid. But Ari is going to deal with one of them. Whoa, hello. Ali with the double. Excellent stuff. Responding pretty Pretty damn well to Arya's first kill on Nitro. And just like that, snap of the fingers. Everyone's dead, that. Four men are dead. Four dogmen. 80% of dogmen are dead. Ooh, I'm not sure what Ali was up to there, but now he's dead as well. So Jason has an opportunity to do some damage, although it is the last round of the first half, so it's all about winning the round at this point. Had that counter flash coming in, and Liquid will bide their time. I was just about to say, you can see the double peak coming in, although that smoke will make things a little bit harder. Liquid holding, sorry, Hiko holding down the back. But this flash is coming in, and uh, Adrenaline will be blind, so you can see the double peak trying to continue, but now it's down to the one versus one. Well, uh, well then. <laughs> it looks yeah. like Jason's actually pulling this one off. Hiko's going to clutch this one versus one, and Jason is more, or couldn't be more exposed there. He's <laughs> just standing on top of the crates, yelling, come at me. But that's not good. That's not good. In, that's not a good tactic in war. It's not the greatest, but yeah, Liquid can be pleased, I guess, with how that half turned out, given how dominant Dogman actually looked up until that crucial error they made uh, in a three v three situation. But there we go, seven to eight. So that's definitely something for Liquid to be able to work with at this point going forward into the T side. But it's going to be interesting to see again. It's all going to hinge on, I think, how they use Alu because trying to push around corners for Alu is not going to be too much fun. I don't see him being able to utilize, for, for instance, a good spawn towards Long. I think that's going to be hard for him to be like the guy picking off someone at the corner of Long or even trying to get go for the gap kills or, or just killing someone who's peeking into that angle. So you're you're narrow, narrowing down most of the things yeah, that he's supposed to do. It's like I guess you can actually just, just killing anyone, really. Just no. But, uh, but it yeah. should be really hard. And, uh, there's no doubt that the the guys obviously playing from America are going to have an advantage ping wise. So I'm curious to see how they're actually going to get him to uh, to make an impact in the game. He did a pretty good job, like much better than I would have expected on the CT side. But that also allows him for to set up for people running into him rather than him having to chase after people. So uh, could be a crucial change. But you know, it's up to uh, up to the second half to tell the story, I guess. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Maybe that's the discussion they're having now, actually, yeah. is basically how they're going to use Alu in this. I mean, but th you would assume that they would have had some of this discussion going forward, but obviously now the maps have been picked, there's more to be had at half time as well. So we're about to go back into it, the pistol round on the second half. Let's see who will prove successful on this occasion. Not much between these two teams, just the one round at the moment. 
Yeah, we have a lot of guys uh, from Liquid moving towards the long area to start things off with. Three plays from Dogman getting aggressive on Catwalk. I do like this. It is somewhat in the meta game still, though. The aggressive Catwalk play and uh, the fast push on long could be what the Doctor ordered, but it looks like all the shots will be connected one after another from Dogman. So now the bomb will go down for Liquid. That's very good. But uh, they should really be able to have a strong defense here. Four players. We've already got Hiko with a good engagement. They're going to chase down Abe, actually. And that's going to be a situation where he can't actually support Alu now. Alu's alone on the bomb site. Yeah, he's trying to find those heads. He's found one on short, but he needs to do a bit more damage. Everyone's dead, so never mind. <laughs> Pistol round's going to go the way of Dogmen. Hiko had great timing, actually, just turning the corner of Long as two men were coming his way to challenge the player in CT spawn. But let's Dogmen off to the better start here. We'll see what the reaction is from Team Liquid. They did get a bomb plant, which means they can go for the Eco and try and buy up the AKs in the next round or go for a force buy and try and surprise their team, their opponent, should I say, or they have presumably inferior weaponry. However, Dogmen have gone for the big gun straight away. Four rifles and the MP7 onto Aria. Yeah, this is uh, you know one of those interesting situations because Liquid could have gone for the full save and had the AKs out with with grenades in the next round, but they've actually invested in this one. And Dogman with the Falmas, they're looking at a good time holding this very, very tight choke point. Everyone's dead that. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that they invest, invested so much, actually, because if you look now, th some of them will Nit even struggle to get AKs out. Nitro's on 3-5, and he bought a Deagle last round for no use. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite confused by that. Yeah. It sounds like poor decision making. I mean, that. well, I mean, there are Galils out in, in place, but Galil versus, you know, I mean, if you can have a Galil or an AK versus Famas, I'm taking the, the AK. All day, and there's one example of why. Straight one bullet to the head, and dead. He go looking for the second one. He will indeed find it onto Abbott. Down to 13 HP now. Waiting for the third player, but he will finally die to Jason R. Arya's getting taken down. Dogmen getting dismantled here. A playing around the smoke, but he's getting wall, not wall bangs. He's gonna through the smoke. Smoke bangs? Something about smoke. Jason R left all alone versus three. $3,000 in the bank for Jason. I do wonder if Dogman can buy in the next round. We will find out soon enough. No hunt here for Liquid. I think Dogman should be able to buy up because they had pretty clean ecos. So yeah, they could they could search for a buy here. Only Arya is going to be in real big trouble. So we could see a 5-7 on him, buy up on rest. Maybe Abe's going to opt to go for a... Um, if from Austin some nades instead. But I, I definitely think it's worth it given how volatile the state of Team Liquid's economy is right now. Interesting stuff. Liquid's bringing themselves back into it. And uh, it was all off the back of Hiko just walking into long and getting a double entry. That, that definitely is going to be a big difference. Jason's having a hell of a game, already on 24 kills actually. Definitely putting the, the numbers on the board. And Galil's still on Nitro, just opting to get all the nades instead. So Liquid with more utility to work with, but the AWP is now on Wabbit. There's a massive duel going on at Long here. We've got three CTs and a lot of Ts as well. It's going the way of the uh, CTs here. Wabbit getting two frags, and the bomb will make a exit. But they'll be left a man down, will Team Liquid. We can see Wabbit on the right angle as well to take down Alu. He's going to be at a distinct disadvantage there for multiple reasons. So two versus four now. And uh, CT is going back to long, but there's a massive flank coming in from Aria on short. So the bomb could get taken down here. Indeed it will, leaving Elise alone. The ex-Starcraft player has superb aim, but he's going to need impeccable aim to take down the remaining three. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. And he should be able to reclaim the bomb, but this will expose him massively. And uh, I was a little bit surprised how far ahead Ali was of his two teammates there. Yeah, I was about to say the coordination from Team Liquid doesn't really seem to be on point right now. I mean, it's okay to get caught out by the AWP if you're pushing as a unit because then you have the potential to either push the AWP further back or actually get a trade for it. Uh, with the way that turned out, Alu just was a free kill for Wabbit and he was already racking up kills that round. So he's got a fourth fight from Liquid. Two AKs, three Tech 9s. They've got a few grenades. They're going to move into Long. Well, Hiko will get some information and he's going to move back before getting picked off. Elise charging through mid, taking down Wabbit by surprise. Had support if he needed it with the bomb carrier as well. Now it's just a bomb carry left alone on B slope as the split comes in from Liquid. Yeah, this is actually quite interesting. Liquid have players all over the place, but they are getting smacked down. Put into the dirt. Abe with the shovel there. Undertaker Abe 
as we have Dogmen 12 to 8 now. Looks pretty clean there, and Liquid definitely not in the best of ways. That, uh, that money is not looking too fancy. It's not looking great at all. So Dogmen have a prime opportunity here to set them up closer to that match point. And uh, that would definitely be a surprise, even though they're playing with Alu, who obviously is a stand-in, has like ping. I would have expected more out of just the regular members of Team Liquid. Well, we have a uh, bit of a throwaway round potentially from Liquid. They've got a couple of smokes indeed and flash to work with, and that could help them get a bomb plant. Smoking offside, trying to get a bomb plant here. That could be a wall of smoke there. Indeed. Oh. I think that is a play, but the nades, the guns, everything, the violence. Stop the violence and vote, as Bernie Mac would say. Bomb has gone down, and now Liquid should just be fodder for the remaining Dogmen players. Nitro doing what he can, which won't be much. He'll do a backflip and fall on short. So Liquid have some money to play with, but they're running out of rounds to play with as Dogmen moves to 13. So, I mean, uh, Dogmen seem to be playing pretty well at the moment. And uh, I mean, it, on top of the fact that Liquid are having these like coordination issues, and you know, uh, this is actually looking like this could be the perfect storm here to have for us to have multiple upsets. We've already had two upsets yesterday in North America, quite surprisingly. The drone has five kills. He'll need to uh, pull his socks up if he needs wants to keep his team in this map. It is a best of three. The next map is going to be Cash. Followed by Mirage, should it be necessary. So Harry's holding the alternate angle through Dust Two Doors, which can take some people by surprise. Moving from short to mid, but he's not going to find a connection just yet. In fact, Alu will do exactly that on the T side. Uh, we have the four versus five now, as the Dogmen are down a man, a Dogman, and the Team Liquid side appear to be rallying themselves towards Catwalk, but it's just a few nades over. Looks like they're actually going to go for the drop-off Cat down into into middle, straight into a B play, and Ali's going to keep the distraction running towards short, but now the game's been given up. Professor Chaos with one frag, a second, looking to get the third as the push is starting to slow now. Professor Chaos uh, almost shooting his, his friend He's in the face. Out. Well, the trade's coming in now. Two versus three, and uh, Abe is holding things down, but now the bomb site's finally been lost. It's Alu versus two, and he's looking for his aggressors, but they are not in positions to be picked off by the Finn. And now he will have to try and clutch for his team. We'll see if Dogmen can play the trade game correctly. Both facing the window, maybe some ex expecting some aggression from the uh, stand-in here for Liquid. He's focusing on a tunnel for now. This is the shot onto Wabbit. Gets a snap onto Jason Marr though. Can't get the no-scope. Wabbit takes him down. Dogman moves to 14. That that's was... Uh, <laughs> this Go is ahead. looking rough for Liquid. And then that's that's all really. When you have to rely on Aldi to, to save you out of those kind of situations. They did get a bomb plant. So they're going to get a okay-ish buy in here. But so far, we haven't seen really something of a a proper execute from Team Liquid. They've kind of roamed out in a bit of a default, sending Hiko out towards long every single round, having two people go towards upper, but they haven't really done much with it. So um, I'm hoping to see them change something up here. And pretty aggressive positioning from Dogman right now. This could catch Liquid off guard. Flame carpet gets put down, and Adren will be held while Dogman will assume an aggressive pose. Three men around a short area, including the one close to double doors, but he's moving around. So, how do Liquid react to this? There is a long waiting to be taken, unbeknownst to them. They do have three players around a long area, just waiting, perhaps, for their players in the lower tunnel to finally emerge. Yeah, so quite an interesting and patient game being played. We have, uh, I do believe it is, uh, Wamet peeking with, uh, with the orb on the short position. And of course, he can take a shot, fall off. It's a pretty nice position. Teammates can flash you in as well. And Liquid are going for the A play as well. But they're putting four players towards long, actually. And considering how many players there are on the site, this could actually work out quite well for Dogman on the defense with no one splitting off the, the attention away from from uh, the short area. This should be a pretty decent engagement-wise for, for Abbott. He's got a nice uh, cross onto, onto the site. He's got two for two right now. There's three for three with Adren poking around the smoke, and they made that look easy. And I'm Wabbit. curious, did 
wasn't it Liquid who actually threw that smoke over towards short? From long? I'm not actually sure he personally he threw that smoke. I th I'm, not sure. I th I'm pretty sure that was a Team Liquid player who threw that smoke up on short, which kind of just gave Wabbit a shield for him to play safely as Liquid crossed over and not giving really a a fair chance of actually helping out his team. Perhaps it was for them to jump onto slope and move up, I don't know, but whatever it was, it didn't work out remotely. Team Liquid up against map points now. With what could be their final buy and lead, it's going to be the one on the uh, P90 as they move in for their own B rush through the smoke. Abe behind the red box trying to hold things down. He's got teammates coming in very quickly. Counter Flash is coming in as well. So far, so good for the Dogman. Ari coming in with some frags. Now down to a three versus two. Dogman outside the site for the most part. Professor Chaos coming in with more havoc. Just Alige and Hiko remain on the site itself. And that bomb still being done is actually causing quite a, quite some issues here for Liquid, considering that Wabbit's looking through the angle, so there can't be assistance from a leech close. And Jason's coming up from the back. Very, very big kill there. That's massively important. Now Hiko is pretty screwed, to be honest. Three players on his position. It's all attacking at once. What is Hiko going to do? Spraying wildly. He somehow finds a long-range headshot with the spray. But that's going to be that. And uh, we are going to have the round and the map won by Dogmen. But... 16-8, no less. Big result. Very big. And uh, very well played by, by Dogman just overall. Definitely outclassing Team Liquid in the, on that first map. Yanko, yes. what went wrong for Liquid? Well, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly. I would have to say that B defense was uh, not strong enough for them because this <laughs> first half reminded me of Luminosity's games at Dreamhack Winter and Cobble where they would just go B every round. I don't think... Maybe one round did uh, Dogman finish on the on the A side or, or even have a plan there. So th they even rushed B a couple of times. They I think, I mean, they obviously thought that, that was the weak point of uh, Liquid and they wanted to exploit it. I personally thought they're going to have a bad time after they lost that first gun round when they went into a straight B bomb side that <laughs> when they went mid and the Liquid players pushed B. But... Uh, they managed to win an eco after that, build up a huge bank. They won eight rounds in a row, and uh, coming into second half again, you could see with the, uh, with their city setup, they had a clear plan, and they executed it pretty well. Props to them. So our next map's going to be Cash. That's going to be an important map for Orping again. We saw Alu uh, do some reasonable things on Dust Two. Can he do the same on Cash? I feel like Cash will be pretty easy one for Alu actually. How do you guys feel about that? There's a lot more. I, 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 to be honest, I guess it's just it's just difficult, isn't it? Just uh, for the same reasons. Yeah, I, I still think he could do well. It's like it's not like he messed up anything in particular on Dust no. either. It's just not he wasn't really in a lot of situations where he could be the hero or actually have that much of an instant impact from the get-go of rounds. Because uh, as Yanko said, Dogman pushed so heavily towards that B bomb site. All was either in mid initially or all over the all over the. Uh, on the other side of the map towards long, so it's kind of hard to have an impact if nobody's there. Uh, Cash could be a bit of a different story. I think you could be a lot more versatile with where you want to play your oppers. They can pretty much go all over the map, and I think all is capable of doing so. So, uh, yeah, definitely think you can have an impact. Okay, production said in my ear we're going to use uh, a statistics tool, but now they're saying we're not going to use it, so we're going to go to break instead. We'll be back in a few short minutes with Cash, and we'll see you back at the beginning of that match very shortly. <laughs> 